Okay, so we're now live on YouTube as well. Let me check something real quick. Just to make sure you guys see me. Okay, I'm going to there. Okay. Okay, now I can start. So, Kettlebell uh, Sport Jerk. Uh, quite a, quite a uh, interesting exercise. Uh, there's a few ways to do it. Uh, and uh, one way uh, we can call it the hard style or people style. Another style we can, uh, we can call it a sports style. So, uh, uh, to understand better why it's such difference, uh, we just need to know uh, purpose of it. So, um, well, before before we'll do some lifting, let's do an easy warm up. Uh, we'll go again through the main joints, wrist palms, wrists. Patience. Forearms, elbows, biceps connection, make sure our muscles warm, ready to work, shoulders, Check on our elbow lookouts. A bit of a shoulder mobility. Okay, now I'll work on the back, pelvis, wider stand. I'll simply move to the side. Side. Elbows rotations. Knees. Knee rotations. Straight legs, and start to reach the floor. Deep squat, check on our ankle rotation mobility. All right, okay. Well, first, uh, let me demonstrate a couple of repetitions, and then we'll go step by step through it, and we'll try to practice together these two different styles. As you can see, it's quite a dynamic movement. And now let's talk about uh, lifting technique. Uh, what's the ways to uh, complete this jerk? Uh, what's the way to get these two kettlebells 
over your head. And so, uh, well, simplest uh, way uh, will be to just press them, right? So I can uh, get this belt on my chest. I can just press them and it'll get capable over the head. So when I'll do press, well, it's kind of like a military press, just with kettlebell, so I keep back straight. Well, that's a totally uh, arms exercise. Well, some torso work, no legs involved at all in this exercise. Uh, and well, it depends how strong our arms who might succeed. You know, so, uh, some people are capable of pressing even double 32 kilogram kettlebells, uh, 70 pounds each. Um, and again, this depends uh, what's the goal of this exercise, why uh, we're doing it. And if uh, we want to um, uh, train or improve the strength of our arms, of our shoulders and triceps and, and chest, uh, well, then press probably will be a, a good exercise, but uh, obviously arm muscles uh, much weaker than the legs are, uh, leg muscles. And uh, well, our uh, ability of uh, multiplying this, uh, uh, this exercise will be very limited. So we'll not do too many of the reps. So usually, well, if we'll do uh, press, well, depends again on the weight, you probably will end up somewhere, I don't know, 10, 15 reps, maximum 20 reps. Uh, but then, uh, uh, what if we want to do a, a higher uh, amount of repetitions and what we want, if we want to get a uh, whole body involved in it and what if we'll let uh, legs help us uh, doing this uh, exercise. So we'll, talk, we'll start doing a jerk and jerk will look this way. We clean kettlebells <clears throat> and let's try first the style with a straight bed when there is a no rock position. So holding belts on the chest. So we'll do the first deep. Bump and second deep and, and catch. It's actually impossible to do a, a, another maybe uh, halfway exercise will be a push jerk where we uh, help only at the beginning when we do the first deep and bump and we don't do underscore. So that's a little better than press. Uh, we can do a bit more reps like that because we uh, do some help with our legs to get bells over the head, but still the travel distance is very high. So with this style, when I do the first deep or even squat, okay, for our back straight, I push and I need to uh, push these bells all the way to the top fixation. Well, as tall I am. Six feet plus arms, that's the altitude. Um, and as I said, well, that will be a better result and more reps will be able to perform and probably heavier weight uh, compared to press. But still, we can do even better than that. And, and uh, what we can do is we can do, uh, we, can, we can make legs involved even more in this process and uh, after bump, uh, we'll shorten the distance by squatting under it. So it looks like that. First deep, bump second deep, and top fixation. So this way we'll have an even better chance for success. Legs work a lot, no press uh, uh, by arms at all, only legs. So it seems like, seems like all good, right? Uh, that we're not using too much of arms, we're using legs, but uh, what will happen is uh, if you'll be keep going like that, yes, legs will be totally handling the war, but you will realize that uh, even you kind of you're not pressing kettlebells, but they're not exactly 
the kettlebell is not exactly comfortable lying on your chest. They're not lying here actually at all. And uh, you're holding them. Uh, that's a static effort for you to, to secure bells here on top of your chest. Uh, and it's like a, a sand watch. You know, you might not notice it uh, at the first rep, but you know, through a course of a time, a minute, two minutes, you'll start to feel, okay, my, my delta starts to give up. They, they not comfortable to hold these belts anymore here on the shoulders. And you will start to find the way, okay, how I can, I can relax them a little bit. You maybe will try to roll the belts on the shoulders. Uh, but one thing, well, if we're talking about kettlebell sport uh, uh, performance, uh, it's not uh, legal to roll bells on the shoulders. But uh, another thing is, it's also it's not that comfortable uh, position to be at with bells like that. Uh, so that's why in kettlebell sport, uh, what uh, athletes came up with is uh, they start to reach pelvis by elbows. And this way, you're able to unload your shoulders, your back, and you're able to breathe this way. So that's how far kettlebell sport performance went from just a military press. So all the way, you know, from um, to the jaw and very particular, uh, that's what's called the right position. And uh, we're able to do such a uh, right position with uh, elbows on the pelvis uh, thanks to these tools, uh, thanks to kettlebells. Only with kettlebells you can do such a right position. It uh, will be way more complicated and difficult and actually not that practical if you'll do it with, with barbell. Uh, because barbell is a one piece of equipment and actually that's very comfortable to rest barbell on the chest. You actually like some uh, uh, advanced Olympic weightlifters, right? You can you can just totally hold the bar on your chest without arms at all. So that's where you can you can relax uh, relax your shoulders. But kettlebells, when you lift two of them, they're not connected to each other anyhow. So that's why it's not that comfortable to rest them here on the chest. Uh, but because of these two separate tools, we can lower uh, the shoulders, pull them down, and reach the pelvis by elbows. And so, uh, when we have this type of a right position, then we're just dealing with our elbows. We're not dealing with kettlebells anymore. We're not dealing with this body of kettlebell ball. We're not pushing it. We're not doing anything to it. We're just resting elbow on the pelvis. And then, when the first dip, we push this elbow up, which makes kettlebells go up. So you squat under it, you straight your legs. And then when you drop, you drop your elbows on the pelvis also. Now, uh, talking about safety. Is it safe to keep back like that when you're lifting bells? Will it be safer if I'll keep the back straight? So, uh, there are a few uh, conditions uh, that we need to uh, follow uh, to be safe during this kettlebell sports style. And uh, uh, that's related to elbow situation. So you can only curve your back, stretch your shoulder blades, pull elbows down if your elbows are standing on the pelvis. Uh, if your elbows not, uh, cannot reach the pelvis, if you cannot rest your elbows on the stomach, then yes, you don't want to curve your back, you better keep it straight. Uh, well, an uh, explanation uh, is uh, simple uh, for that, because uh, if your elbows not uh, resting on the pelvis on the stomach, well, let's have a demonstrate who's not that well either. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it means that we're carrying the weight of a kettlebell here on our chest, which is uh, above the backbone. And well, that means that we need to protect this bone, we need to keep the back straight. Uh, uh, but once we're able to rest elbow on the pelvis, 
pelvis is the is the root is the base of a baseball it's it below it uh so which means that there is no load on your on your backbone and that's the reason why it's safe for you to actually uh, bend your back and totally relax uh back muscles and enjoy uh your right position and so when you follow this rule when you uh rest your elbow on the pelvis and keep it loaded uh and the most of the weight uh, of kettlebell if uh, uh, located above this elbow. Well, it's, it's totally safe to perform this kettlebell sport jerk. And this style, this kettlebell sport jerk is the best for endurance work, uh, for a long, long, uh, uh, endurance uh, endurance lifting. It's basically even towards to not really a weight lifting, but more of like just a cyclic, cyclic work where uh, we're not talking about the single repetition, we're talking about uh, performing amount of uh, repetitions every minute and keep the space and control and just going for time and time and time. And with two bells, uh well most uh common events are 10 minutes uh with one bell that's uh, called a marathon so half marathons when guys can go for uh, 30 minutes or one hour so uh this exercise mean to improve not your strengths but uh your endurance primarily and uh, strength endurance uh, strength endurance that's ability of your muscles to perform uh, the works through the course of uh, time with uh, multiple uh, repetitions, and usually uh, it involves the um, kind of a, uh, well either static phases or relaxation phases, where can you dealing with a uh, with a work and rest, work and rest. So um, another maybe more common example of uh, such work will be uh, cycling or rowing, uh, where like you, uh, you make an effort, like let's say on the rowing, you, you pushing, uh, 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 you pulling the handles, but then you have a reset phase where you can relax muscles a little bit and go for next rep. So you actually working only in one direction and then you rest up in another, and that's what allows you to, to multiply this repetition. So in kettlebell sport, we found this sweet spot in the right position. That's where we found the rest. Where we don't need to lower the weights and put them on the floor, and that's what allows us to just keep going and going with these bells for as long as we want. But, uh, that's the, the magic of kettlebell sport. How professional guys can do, you know, 140 pounds, uh, two kettlebells of 70 pounds for 10 minutes long, can do almost 200 repetitions. Best guys can do like high ones, uh, high 170s, like almost 180 reps so there's absolutely no way you can do that amount of repetitions uh, by pressing this way there's no way you can bring this bell over your head by pressing it uh, so many times so if you look at the group your endurance and your strength endurance and your skill so that will be the exercise for you the capable sport job where you're resting your elbow elbows on the pelvis and then uh, well you also have a perfect top fixation well perfect uh, fixation that's a more obvious face and uh, in all of the styles uh, it's a hard style it's a, it's a sports style well it's uh, everyone about uh, agree on uh, uh, straight arms, low elbows, and simple shoulders. Uh, well, straight, straight legs, obviously. So best way to learn kettlebell sports style if you've never done it before will be to practice with a one uh, lightweight uh, kettlebell 
And uh, even if you're not used to uh, bend your back and reach uh, to your pelvis, so uh, you should just uh, take your time and direct. So let's say you clean it so well with a straight back, so you're just missing uh, one more step. So all they need to do is uh, exhale, and it's much, much easier with one kettlebell because you're uh, able to go not only forward, but also uh, lower shoulder to the side. So it's uh, flexibility wise, it's much easier task to get elbow on the pelvis when you lift one kettle. Uh, and just try to spend some time here. It's, it should feel totally effortless and comfortable here when you are uh, finally able to put, to find this bone, you look crest, crest, scope, place your elbow on it. That's it. There is no tension in your shoulder whatsoever at all. Well, then you uh, incline your forearm the way that well, it will be kind of balanced and stand vertical. You see the, the body of kettlebell is uh, outside of the forearm. So this way, uh, that's why uh, if your forearm will be literally vertical, it will not be a balanced and comfortable position where this bell will pull you out. So you need to slightly incline your forearm in. So this way you will find this perfect angle where uh, kettlebell and forearm not falling out, not falling in. All right, so that's it. We're talking about the front view. About the side view, uh, again, we want to avoid uh, to lower the, the chest. So you don't want to lean back in the rack. So you want to stand as upright as possible. It's almost uh, like it's possible to stand in the right position when it's uh, no connection of kettlebell and shoulder at all. Uh, so that will give you the best sense of, uh, of your posture. So this way, uh, you will really feel okay how uh, how I should place my elbow on this pelvis. So the mass, mo most weight of kettlebell you should feel here on the handle, which goes through the uh, axle of your forearm and end up in, in your elbow. And then it's okay to have uh, just a connection of uh, of a kettlebell and shoulder for just better stability, but not much weight there. <clears throat> that's actually a little that's one of the exercises, the static hold, where you can just you can stand, you can try to walk like that with your with your elbow on the pelvis. You can switch sides. You can try exactly the same thing again if you catch it with a straight back. Just take your time, light kettlebell, and let this elbow slide on your stomach on the pelvis, release your trapezes and shoulder. Stuck it here. Just try to move a little bit. Just shift away from one leg to another. You see, I can shake legs. I can have a conversation like that. I can drink coffee like that. It's just, you should really feel yourself like at home here, comfortable, totally. No any tension anywhere at all. All uncomfortable here and there. So that will be one of the most important skills in uh, your success of uh, kettlebell sport joke. If you're able to have such comfortable and relaxed position in the rack. <clears throat> totally, totally comfortable here. <clears throat> and then when you found this comfort, this, uh, this comfort of elbow resting on the pelvis, then we can practice the first dip. And that's also something that uh, uh, well, important to keep keep your eye on because some guys they you have let's say a great uh, rack position, but then when you they get ready for jerk, they um, pulling elbow away from pelvis, straighten the back and roll the bell on the shoulder, which means that the jerk will go from the shoulder. So that's again just this destroying the whole uh, uh, idea of a, of, a, of a jerk. We, well, okay, rack position is good, but only that's only half. Uh, of the mission. Uh, we need to perform the bump same way. So uh, we're enjoying this uh, elbow resting on our pelvis in the rear. And then when we go to the first dip, uh, nothing should change here. We still have this elbow resting on the pelvis. I'm totally comfortable to have no connection at all with kettlebell on the shoulder, so there's no weight on my chest. Uh, and you see, there's a little bit different way of me doing this uh, first dip. You see what's happened? Uh, 
with my legs and my lower back. So uh, I'm directing my knees forward. I'm squeezing my glutes. I'm stretching the lower back, contracting abdominals. Kind of twist pelvis forward so it still will do the work as a shelf uh, for my elbow. And again, uh, if, I, if I do so, if my elbow is resting on my pelvis, uh, back feels great. Totally, totally relaxed, no weight on it at all, feels really comfortable. <clears throat> so right position. So my low back even more flat here and stretch on the first. That's actually the best, best feel of the low back. You know, it just feels really, really nice. <clears throat> and so when you're able to get to this first deep phase, then you can just play a little bit and you can just start kicking the elbow just a bit. Not the full jerk here, but just just a bit to just a get sense of uh, the whole movement where there's no arms. And only the reason why this elbow took off from my pelvis is because I extend my quad and I kick this elbow by pelvis, that's all. There's no drive from arms. Well, only all the steering. Only I just, you know, apply a little bit of arms work, make sure that this bell will not fly somewhere to the left or to the right. So only in this matter, just a bit of a steering with arms, but no actual effort of lifting the weight up. <clears throat> so a bit, a bit of a kick. reps, no pressure, can switch hands, again, first in direct, take your time, lower your shoulder, stack your elbow on the pelvis, get comfortable here, and then first deep. Also there is no rush here, and you can spend a bit of time in the, on the bottom of the first deep to really kind of get a sense of this, uh, of this uh, face of uh, your elbow standing, on the pelvis, glutes squeezed, low back stretched, quads engaged, abdominals contracted, no weight on the shoulder, on the chest at all, a bit of a bump. Kick it. Kick it and then let it fall. This elbow from where it came from on your pelvis and absorb it by your quads. Like in the car, shocks, that's your quads. They should take all of the work. Don't uh, uh, make your your chest work. Well, it will not be a chest, it will be your low back action. And that's what actually make, uh, can cause some discomfort in your low back. If you will be dropping kettlebell on your chest, you will be leaning back. So that might overload your, your low back. But, well, it's just uh, something you shouldn't do. It's just a bad form. So just don't do this mistake. Keep torso upright. And do the best job to land your elbow on the pelvis and let the quads work. Your back will be fine. <sighs> well, and when you're comfortable to uh, do this kick, to bump your elbow, my pelvis, you're comfortable uh, on this elbow landing on your pelvis, then you will just apply a bit more force to it and you will do the full size bump. Full size bump will be uh, where your elbow is slightly above your shoulder. So that's pretty much as high as it should go. And then from, from uh, this point, you need to move under it and stick your straight arm under the bell. And that's how you will get the complete jerk. So, right position, first deep. Elbows loaded, we do bump and second. Nice and stable here, straight legs. First deep, bump, second deep, ball fixation. When you drop, aim your elbow on the pelvis, don't be scared. Don't be scared, as long as your elbow will land on the pelvis, that's fine to relax your back, 
Just get ready, get your quads ready to absorb this weight. Don't pull shoulder back. From the side, you keep the shoulder above the pelvis. Aim elbow into this pelvis. Yeah, will be a totally great and safe experience. No danger whatsoever for your low back at all. You can repeat five reps per arm. Again, enjoy your right position. No rush here, you can do a bit of a walk. Leave the shoulder. Bump. Totally relax. And now, jerk. Same, other arm. Nice and easy right position. Then walk, can zip a cup of tea. Can you guys hear me? Bump. And finally jump. This technique makes uh, uh, the scatterballs is real life. Well, you basically, when you do a uh, jerk and kettlebell sports style, then you can look on weight of kettlebells and compare them to pretty much your squats weight. Not the military press, uh, bench press weight, but squats press. And if you're talking about squats for just even average uh, fitness person who just well doing a uh, easy recreational work well body weight on the bar not a big deal for squats uh all right if it's a uh, um like 80 kilograms well personally myself i was able to do even 100 reps in a row with uh, 80 kilograms bar even with a 100 kilogram bar once but i mean it, you you definitely can multiply it right and if we're talking about, well, depends what your body weight. For me, body weight is a bit heavier than professional division kettlebells. Uh, professional division kettlebells is 64 kilogram bells. Um, oh, um, 32 kilogram kettlebells, 64 kilogram total. So that's about uh, about 70%, 75% of my body weight. Uh, and of course, I'm, I'm confident that I can handle uh, 10 minutes of jerk with these bells. Uh, uh, because uh, I know that my legs way stronger than that, uh, and I can do uh, just hundred squats with it. Uh, and uh, when I'm doing the jerk, it's uh, amplitude is short. It's barely forty five degree. It's not a, you know, it, I am not. I'm, I'm far away from the from breaking the horizontal line, right? When it's uh, under squat, uh, it's it's about forty five. So it's basically kind of a half squat. Uh, can I do a half squat with only say seventy percent of my body weight? Well, of course I can. Uh, so only what's important for me is just to keep the elbows on the pelvis. Well, then endurance involved, of course, uh, when you go for time, for 10 minutes, uh, because, uh, well, anyways, uh, you're holding this weight on your frame. 
And of course, your heart rate is uh, higher than uh, in complete rest, so there are some other factors involved. And of course, your mobility should be good enough. Ideally, if you need uh, this type of a rack position, so uh, your mobility should be even a little bit better than, than, than this. So uh, mobility is a big part of a preparation in kettlebell sport, uh, which which makes this exercise uh, quite uh, uh, complete in terms of uh, abilities you are challenging, uh, and it's you get not only stronger by lifting these weights, but you get more endure and you get uh, well, you're motivated to be flexible, uh, and and that's why. Many kettlebell lifters, uh, well, especially when you're not challenging the world records, uh, can totally uh, take care of their body by doing this kettlebell sport exercise. You pretty much don't really need any other exercises. You, you totally can survive without them. And I mean, uh, myself, I like to do what's called a GPP, general physical preparation, where I also do just squats and push-ups, just to you know, uh, keep uh, uh, get a little, even a little bit more strength that I need uh, for bells uh, to be more confident about my lifting. And I do a cardio preparation, I do running to be even a little bit more endured that I need for bells, and that's what makes me comfortable doing kettlebell kind of sport. But if uh, your goal is just to be fit, uh, uh, and kind of, kind of well, just by absolute measure, uh, moderate, uh, solid uh, uh, physical condition. Uh, by doing kettlebell sport exercises, you will improve your endurance and your strength uh, and your coordination. Uh, well, before we we'll end, uh, let's do a couple. Let's try a couple rests with uh, two kettlebells. And well, with two kettlebells. Uh, the, the mobility uh, is a bit bigger challenge. It's, as I said, it's much easier to reach pelvis uh, with one shoulder, uh, with one elbow. It's a bit more difficult to reach it with two, and it's also kind of anatomy involved. And it's slightly uh, because uh, based on proportions of your torso and your arm. And let's say if you have a short arm and tall torso, it's way far away, this pelvis from you too. Uh, to make this connection. So that's something that you need to put really good work on, moves up your shoulders, and um, uh, yeah, mobility work for us. Uh, for, uh, also the width of your pelvis, as wider your pelvis is actually more comfortable in the rack, and if your torso is shorter, arms longer, it can get uh, really easy and comfortable. So there's uh, some anatomy preferences I can say even even the kettlebell sport is uh, quite uh, um, I would say uh, um, acceptable for any body type. But well, as I said, of course, uh, if your pelvis is wide, if your torso is short, if your arms are long, well, that's a blessing for uh, kettlebell sport, especially for exercises like jerk or long side. Uh, and even for myself personally, it's been a bit of a challenge because well, I have a narrow. Uh, waist and um, tall torso, and for me it was uh, difficult at the beginning of my career to get my elbows on the pelvis. I was struggling with it; I just wasn't able to reach. So I put lots of effort in uh, mobility routine. Well, also it's well, maybe someone can consider it as, as a cheating, uh, but well, it's legal by sports standards, so uh, the lifting belt helped a lot. Uh, because let's say if you have these troubles, if you're missing, you know, this half inch, you know, to your pelvis. Uh, well, well, might just cover for you this this missing half inch because uh, basically what this belt will do is it will uh, widen your pelvis by well inch and a half and it will rise the upper edge of this pelvis so your rate position will be more uh, acceptable uh, uh, for you. Well, plus. You know, on your way uh, of a perfection and uh, working on your technique, you know, while it's not perfect yet, well, it gives a bit, uh, will give a bit of a support to your back in case of, of some, you know, accident, uh, bad rep or sloppy rep. So, uh, lifting belt is recommended when you lift doubles. It's possible to go without it if you're comfortable in your right position, but uh, um, you know, if you, there's any issue with the right position or you go for a really tough set, well, that's a, that's a good uh, uh, backup. And so with two bells, 
same story, place your both elbows on the pelvis. Again, no weight on your chest, on your shoulders. Also, I can do a bit of a walk. Well, both arms busy, so I cannot drink my tea, but I at least can breathe. I can breathe, and I don't have any tension in my shoulders. First deep, same thing. Elbows, uh, knees go forward, glutes squeezed, abdominals contracted. I try to pull shoulders forward, so weight still on my pelvis. Bum. When you bump two bells, don't let elbows go out. Try to keep elbows under your wrists. You see, they took off from pelvis and let them land on the pelvis. Nice few bumps. Oh, finally, a few jerks. When you're able to uh, uh, follow all this uh, technique uh, elements, next challenge for you is to uh, be able to maintain it through the course of repetitions and uh, even under fatigue. And that's a that's a challenge. That's a challenge to keep focus sharp through tens and tens of repetitions and time and fatigue. Uh, and uh, well, you're simply getting better at it by practicing it. And um, well, I would say that the jerk exercise uh, for me is more challenging uh, technique wise rather than long cycle. Long cycle is more difficult exercise physically because of the clean phase is just, uh, uh, just, just a heavier exercise, but uh, jerk has a more kind of a picky, precise technique. Uh, and uh, well, you see, it's it's even like um, if we're talking about the natural uh, um, well talents or, or abilities. Uh, so uh, we are we are all different. And some person kind of was born towards uh, well, if we're talking about the athletism, uh, was born being a, a weightlifter. You know, he's a stronger guy. He may be you know not that endure, or not that precise, but he can just have a. <clears throat> Thick muscles, uh, tendons, ligaments, joints, uh, and other other people are opposite. Maybe they build for endurance work. Uh, also, they they are lighter, uh, but more endure. Some people, you know, build more for gymnastics. So uh, that's important to figure out what type of person uh, you are, uh, you know, uh, athletically wise. And uh, uh, myself, I. Myself, I'm more of a kind of a strength guy. I feel way closer being a, a long cycle. I rather go heavier and slower. And again, the precision is not that important in long cycle. So I, I did better in long cycle in my career than in jerk, and I'm trying to catch up with it. And I'm progressing. Uh, but I, I, again, if I will compare my long cycle achievements and jerk achievements, the long cycle achievements are. Stronger, but uh, some people have opposite uh, story. They they better in, in the precise work. They better in jerk, the snatch, and it's difficult for them to do long cycle just because maybe they don't have that much uh, strength uh, to it. Uh, uh, so uh, that's kind of helps you to choose. Okay, what exercise is the best for you? But uh, doesn't matter on this choice. I still recommend to do the rotations around all three exercises. Because by doing block cycle, you'll get a bit stronger. By doing jerk, you'll get a bit more uh, precise and advanced uh, uh, technique-wise. Uh, and again, if you have uh, lots of troubles to figure out this jerk and make it work, uh, then I recommend you to first uh, get some success in long cycle. First. Because this clean face, especially if you have troubles to relax in direct position, it feels really refreshing. When you're able to reclean 
This opportunity to re-clean every rep uh, gives you a chance to adjust your hand insertion, adjust your rack position. So uh, that might be the way to go. So if you're kind of work on this jerk uh, within the long cycle exercise, and when you will get somewhat comfortable, well, then you can try a, a jerk on. Excellent, guys. Uh, I think, well, that's that's all, all what I want to say as the, kind of my intro words about the jerk. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to uh, write me a direct message or write some comments under this post, uh, on the, under this uh, video. I'll be, uh, I'll be happy to chat about it. And I hope I will be keep doing these videos and, uh, you know, we'll do more and more practice of this capable sports style. But, uh, well, before I'll let you go, uh, let's do just easy, easy stretching. Uh, it's uh, just, uh, just a quick one. So what we can do is uh, let's slow the front leg, like that behind the straight, straight arms. Nice arch stretch. One stand, arms on the pelvis, right arm going to the side, as far as it can, twice each direction. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Finish. <sighs> Stretching is very important and critical uh, in general. That's your recovery. And plus, again, if your technique is not perfect yet, if you still feel a bit of a tension here and there in your body, if you still feel that you're taking some load on your low back, if you're the stretching right after your kettlebell lifting, you most likely will solve any issues. Uh, you will break all this like a uh, nuts uh, and. Uh, muscle spasms your back and you will most likely will feel great after workout and you know will not be any discomfort. So, so uh, next one, let's reach towards our toes, we go right, middle, left, up, straight legs, right, middle, left, up, and right, middle, left, up, switch the direction, let's go left, middle, right, up and left, middle, right, up and last one, left, middle, right, oh, awesome. Now, on the forward, first, try to keep torso upright, then reach to the floor, place your shoulder in front of your knee. The leg that behind should be straight. You can get back to upright position, switch sides. Well, and finally, a bit of ankle mobility. Heel on the floor. For this exercise, you can uh, balance yourself, arms can be ahead, behind, you can even use kettlebell as a handle to balance yourself for this exercise, but it's a great mobility exercise for your lower legs, for your feet, for your ankles, for your knees. And finally, heels together. Grab your knees, pull yourself in, really get the floor as close as you can. Very almost touch your low back. All right. Shake your legs, arms. Well, of course, stick mobility. Well, that's something that you can do before workouts. And I kind of skip it to save the time to give you. You know, as much information as I can. And it was obviously a light set, so I wasn't worried. 
I don't have my shoulder situation, but when I do a proper capable sport workout, of course, I always do the stick rotations. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, guys, for uh, spending uh, time with me, for watching this, uh, this class. I hope you like it. Again, as I said, please send your feedback. Uh, doesn't matter, it's a good or bad. If you didn't like something, let me know because, well, it's never um, uh, never enough uh, time, or, or it's it's always something something to learn. Uh, and well, uh, yeah, I appreciate it if you you know will give some uh, some pointers. Uh, so maybe next time I will I will um, uh, discuss uh, these questions if you will have some. Okay, thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Bye.